Whenever a new medium pops up, there's pretty much just one guarantee. People are gonna try to use it to hook up. Think back to newspaper personal ads. Or those weird old VHS dating videos. Hey, how's it going? They call me the Hispanic Dragon, cause uh, typically by the end of the night I'll be dragging these nuts across your face. My friends call me Wavy, but the ladies, they call me the Silk Master, cause in the bedroom I'm as smooth as it gets. You could tell me about your family, and I could tell you about my mother. Uh, things she used to say to me, things she used to wear, things she used to make me wear, things that she wore that I would like you to wear. And the internet, forget about it. It's kind of funny to think about how nowadays we basically have Tinder on our phones and kind of just think of it like a vaginal Grubhub. And everyone's just kind of cool with it, but it used to be a lot weirder. Even weirder. Just a couple fellas doing what a couple fellas gotta do. Alright, not that weird. But let's take it all the way back to 1998, before dating sites were really a thing. A time when one pioneer of the early internet decided to take things into his own hands. Hello, my future girlfriend. This is what I sound like. Did he ever find a girlfriend? Let's find out. If you're trying to get ready for your hot internet date, I got some good news for you. This episode is sponsored by Dollar Shave Club. Obviously, I don't do a whole lot of shaving, but recently I've gotten into the habit of cleaning myself up with Dollar Shave Club's Executive Razor and their Dr. Carver Shave Butter. And they're not just a shaving company. They got all kinds of stuff for showering, brushing your teeth, deodorant, and they even got butt wipes. Their hydrating starter set comes with the executive razor with four cartridges and the Dr. Carver shave butter like I told you about, their two-in-one mint and cedarwood face and body wash, and their sage and black pepper shampoo and conditioner, which is my personal favorite because I like to smell good. They ship everything straight to your home and the more you buy, the more you save. Just go to dollarshaveclub.com slash wang to get your first starter set for just $5. If you've ever played a Vectrex, or if your kids have a Vectrex, I, uh, I was responsible for that. I've often made reference to how in the old Web 1.0 days, the Tripod, Angel Fire, GeoCities days, you know, the days before Andy Milanakis invented memes. Browsing the internet was kind of like being on a raft in a vast ocean bouncing between a bunch of weird little islands. And one of the most common purposes of these islands was to serve as sort of a personal profile page. Basically serving the purpose of social media before social media was really a thing. And there is one king who took this a step further. He made a website with a purpose. To find a girlfriend. Hello My Future Girlfriend was made on Tripod in 1998, featuring a picture of a little kid with a fantastic mullet, and text that read, If you have come here, it must be because you meet me in Yahoo Chat. Let's take a second and talk about what a ballsy move that is. I mean, you're in Yahoo chat chatting up all these girls, and when they want to know more about you, it's like you're like, hey, no words, just look at my website. It's kind of like going to a bar and just giving a girl your business card. I just lost my girlfriend. If you want to be my girlfriend, please email me or ICQ me. My email is kidblount at yahoo.com. My ICQ number is 19171502. My name is Michael. This is me. If you have Microsoft Internet Explorer, you will hear me in the background. If you have Netscape, click here. If you are going to be my girlfriend, please don't dump me after I like you. And while most people in those days would have a PHAT fat MIDI playing in the background, Kid Blount played this audio file of his voice. Hello, my future girlfriend. This is what I sound like. I am 11 years old, in the 6th grade, in New Mexico. Please PM me if I'm on Yahoo Chat. Bye! And this website would only briefly stay between Kid Blount and the countless girls he would seduce in Yahoo Chat. It very quickly started to make the rounds in IRC chats and get passed around emails before it made its way onto a website, HowFreshIsThisGuy.com, where he was featured as one of the fresh guys. But the hero of our story wouldn't fully be propelled into the mainstream of the internet until 2001. That was when he found himself on the TV shows The Screensavers and Unscrewed with Martin Sargent. 
And later on that year, he would be posted to the front page of Newgrounds.com by its creator, Tom Fulp. Over the years, Newgrounds has always been timely with pointing out slash making fun of viral trends on the internet. We were right there at the onset of Mahir, What's Up, and All Your Base. So now the question, is this going to be the next big thing? Is everyone going to be emailing this link to all their friends? Respond to this post with your thoughts, or just go ahead and create a Flash cartoon making fun of this poor kid. Either way, I can't wait to hear your thoughts. And the community very quickly came out to roast this kid. Greg Mundo, I hate this kid. He's been hit by the ugly log, and he sounds like a woman. Jesus, if he thinks the internet will get him laid, he has another thing coming. Mork, that kid was hit by a whole ugly lumber yard. Damn, he is a bugger looser than me. Dado the mofo. Ha 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 ha. Oh, I am sorry. It is just impossible not to laugh at this little geese voice as soon as you hear it. This is what I sound like. Whoop de doo. Hearing your voice make me want to punch your little rat face even more. I don't care how old the sight is. That was just too great. Adding to my gavarits. Hey. It'll help me laugh when I'm feeling down. However, a lot of members also point out that this site format at this point 2001 was already getting kind of tired and played out. It wasn't that different from Mahir or a lot of other weird guy personal pages that have been popular the past few years. And another user, Blast Zorak, made reference to Super Greg, who also had a page in this format that had making the rounds around the same time. But Tom Fulp saw things a little differently. But Super Greg is fake. Super Greg and several other oddball characters were made up by some PR firm who wanted to impress people by their ability to create a viral buzz. The problem is, they followed the Mahir formula exactly. Any dumbass knows that in order to be viral, it has to be different. I hate Hollywood. This kid is similar to Mahir, but different, and amusing enough to get my attention. The plea for a girlfriend is also not an original concept, but coming from an 11 year old kid with a mullet, I get a big kick out of it. Ultimately, although by the time Tom Fulp shared this website, the format was a little bit played out and the site itself had been shared around for a few years, countless memes and Newgrounds videos wound up being made about it and helped spread its popularity even further. And ultimately, Hello My Future Girlfriend would wind up being one of the most popular memes of this format, continually re-emerging year after year. But that still leaves us with the million dollar question. Who is this kid, and did he ever find a girlfriend? Fortunately, for the sake of this mystery, the kid who made the website, identified as Mike Blount, would make a few more attempts over the next few years to reclaim his internet fame. The first attempt would come in 2004 when he opened up a new website called Deceitful.org. On this website, he posted brand new pictures of himself alongside the mullet picture, and unfortunately, I haven't been able to find the exact pictures that he used on that website. They haven't been archived to my knowledge, but if you happen to have them for some reason, it is an important piece of internet history, I think. He also wrote up a lengthy history of everything that happened to him after his website went viral. He begins by telling how the webpage came to be made. I created the Hello My Future Girlfriend webpage during the summer before 6th grade. I was 11. During this time, my elementary school friends were getting girlfriends. It was all completely innocent at the time. That was back in 1998. I lied about my age so I could register a tripod account. I had recently taken a beginner HTML class for kids at the local college. The class lasted at most two days. The instructor requested that each student bring two pictures for him to scan so he could put them on our web pages. I brought the picture of me and then a landscape picture my mother took while in Colorado on vacation. The class was very interesting to me at the time. One of the last HTML tags I learned in the class was the embed tag. I had not met a girl in grade school that would bear the burden of being called my girlfriend, so in an act of desperation, I created the webpage. I planned to meet a nice girl in Yahoo chat and then give her the webpage address and hope for the best. As many of you have seen the webpage mirrored somewhere, the email address has been changed. My original email address was kidblount at hotmail.com. Only after the web page was mirrored did this change to KidBlount at Yahoo.com or something else. He then goes on to describe the rise in popularity a few years after he had made the site. 
In 2000, I received my first email from someone who had seen the webpage. It was very negative and quite surprising. I just shrugged it off and thought that it was just the one person that saw the page. The next day, my Hotmail inbox was flooded. I bet I received at least 50 messages. Some were positive and some were negative. At the time, I was only 13 years old. The positive emails were encouraging and the negative emails had a depressing effect. It seemed for every one positive email, there were three negative ones. Soon the phone call started. Middle of the night, people would call and ask if I had a girlfriend. I had not told my parents about the webpage, and I really didn't want them to know. Well, eventually I had to tell them. They couldn't believe I had done it. Well, neither could I. So, I tried to get into my tripod account and delete the webpage. However, I had forgotten the password, so there was nothing I could do. Later, I found out that my simple webpage had been mirrored all over the internet. During this time, a person by the name of Magoo contacted me. He wanted to interview me for his website, www.chimp.ca. I reluctantly agreed and had a couple ICQ conversations with him. He was encouraging. I lied to him about having a girlfriend. I told him I had found a girlfriend in hopes that the late night calls would stop. This was a lie. Eventually, I came clean. One of the girls that had emailed me was in high school and very attractive from her photo. I had released the chat conversations I had with her to Magoo. He in turn posted her picture on his website along with the chat. Later, the girl in the photo contacted him and she requested her picture be removed from the site. It turns out a middle-aged man was posing as her. I soon changed all my information, no longer giving out even my first name. For a period of about six months, I believe I didn't even use the computer. I wish that this whole thing would at least stay out of my school. I don't think I could have endured being made fun of in school for this. I wanted it all to just go away, so I stopped all contact with the online world. The phone calls also seemed to stop. I was happy, because I honestly believed that it all stopped. Slowly, I came back to the online world. I used to even enjoy watching the screensavers on Tech TV. That all changed in January 2001. An old friend called me out of the blue and asked if I made a webpage looking for a girlfriend. Shocked, I explained to my friend that I had. He then told me that he was watching the screensavers and it featured my site. I asked my friend to not tell anyone. I went to the screensavers website to see what had happened. I then read how Martin Sargent had made fun of the site. As a result of this incident, I have not watched the screensaver since. Later, I discovered that most of my friends had seen this episode of the screensavers, but had not made the connection that it was me. In May 2003, after completing the computer science final, the class was given free time on the computers. A friend that sat right next to me went to Razoric.com to look at their animations. I glanced over at my friend's computer and see that he is watching the No Luck Mikey animation. I hope that my friend would not make the connection that I am the same Mikey whose picture was in the animation. Somehow, my friend overlooked that I was Mikey. He laughed at the animation. And things took a really scary turn when he discovered that he had been completely doxxed. Recently, I had not heard anything about the site, and I believed that it had finally died out. Currently, I am a junior in high school. In November, the high school's computer technician called me into her office and told me she had received an email from someone looking for me. The email was from... Link removed. He claimed he was an old friend and wanted to interview me. I told the computer technician that I had never heard of this Aaron, so at my request, she deleted the email. I immediately went to... Link removed to see what the site was about. There, I found mention of my old webpage. About a week later, the school secretary asked to speak to me. Aaron had posted on the high school alumni bulletin board that he was looking for me. He claimed he was an old friend. Once more, at my request, the message was deleted. A few weeks went by, and I thought that the people at Link Removed would get bored and stop in their search for me. I was wrong. On December 18th, 2003, I received an email from an Eric MM13. It was a simple message. He said that he was a longtime fan since the early days 
and he asked how things were and if I got a girl. This was quite a surprise. I wondered how he could have gotten my email address. I did a Google search and found that he was a member of the Bait Shop forums. On the Bait Shop forums, I discovered that there has been an active forum about me since at least April of 2003. One of the latest posts was titled Michael Blount Information. The post linked back to Link Removed. The page was entitled Michael Blount Findings. It listed my parents' names, home address, home phone number, school address, latest accomplishments, as well as my mother's occupation and her hobbies. I found out that my email address had been posted with my name on one of the pages at the Adventures in Supercomputing site, sponsored by Lanel. I quickly changed the address to a different one in hopes that the sanctity of my current email address might be preserved. And he had also learned of Newground's interest in him. Later, I discovered the large collection of Flash animations at Newgrounds. I was shocked to find out the number of Flash animations on Newgrounds that involved me. I actually found a couple of the animations humorous, others I found pretty lame. It has taken me a while to go from the webpage being the bane of my existence to actually accepting it. Now, even I can go back and laugh. Ultimately, the new website that he made would be very short-lived because he had a falling out with the person who designed it for him. Damned people. Okay, because I don't have time to redo this site right now, this is gonna be up until this is redone. The site you see now was done by Matt. I do not recommend using him as a site developer because he can be a pain in the ass to work with. Okay, with that said, if anyone feels like helping me with the new website, contact me through the contact on the side. For the most part, after this falling out, Mike would be more or less quiet on the internet until 2010 when he came back to make a Reddit AMA. Although most of what he had to say in the thread was already covered in his 2004 website, there were a few new tidbits, such as a newer collection of animations that Tom Fulp had curated. Hello my future girlfriend. Those words will forever be stuck in my head, along with I kiss you and what's up. Two other catchphrases that have become prominent on the web. Mikey is a poor, lonely boy with a mullet. His girlfriend dumped him, and he has turned to the web to find a new love. I hadn't realized that this site was actually two years old when I posted about it on the front page. It was still new to most people, and the response was insane. We instantly had a slew of Mikey parodies on the portal. Luckily, this was not drawn out quite as bad as some of the other trends on NG. We got a few really funny cartoons, and some that are just beating a dead horse. You can sort them out below. He also revealed that he had made another short-lived website back in 2008, and this one was mostly just a blog that collected his daily thoughts. But perhaps the biggest revelation in this AMA was the answer to the burning question. Did Mikey ever find a girlfriend? Yes, I am gay. I like the cock. I have never had a relationship with a woman was recently broken up with again, so my third long-term relationship ended mainly because I did not work out, which I'd like to and will start doing soon. And with this revelation, he would take to YouTube to create a fitting bookend to this story. A sequel to Hello, My Future Girlfriend. Hello, my future boyfriend. This is me, 22, still live in New Mexico. I'm online a lot, so you should not I am me. Bye. Thanks for stopping by. As of now, it seems like this is where the story ends, but perhaps someday we'll get another update as to whether or not he ever found a boyfriend. Anyway, if you like this video, you'll also like my video about Mahir. Bye bye <laughs>